Welcome to Broken Tusk Rising, a Pathfinder 2nd Edition actual play in the Galarian campaign setting. We're playing through the quest for the Frozen Flame adventure path. I'm Sean, and I'm playing Andreas Witchborn, the human magus. I'm Jessica, and I'm playing Zancath, the halfling fighter. I'm Jeanette, and I'm playing Jonesy, the human cleric. This is Josh, and I'm playing Corgo, the human barbarian. Last time on Broken Tusk Rising, Andreas, Jonesy, Corgo, Zankath, and Hrungara ventured farther into Red Cat Cave in search of the spirit of Siarstik, the Great Cat. They started in a chamber with six creatures that Andreas realized were Blindheims, humanoid frog-like animals. Two of the creatures were dead at the hands of the party, and the others cowered in the darkness with their glowing eyes. They left the creatures alone, moving into the next chamber where they were ambushed by another Blindheim and her strange, two-tongued, frog-like friend. The Blindheim flashed its bright eyes, blinding everyone briefly, and Corgo and Zenkath for a bit longer. But the party delivered a beatdown on them nonetheless. The creatures fled to another chamber to the south and dove into an underground lake, escaping. We left the heroes as a human-like head emerged from the lake, seemingly made of water. The creature quietly said, Hi and then sank back down a bit, now only visible from the eyes up, as it watched the party. Andreas and Jonesy are now standing in the passage, looking at a huge room that extends to the south beyond the range of their vision. Ripples flow across the surface of a tranquil, underground lake. You're standing on a rocky shore that rings the lake on the north, west, and east sides. Passages to the north and west lead back to the room you just came from. Another passage leads to the east. A wet, Flat rock in the middle of the lake bears several long grooves, as though marred by a claw. Jonesy, I know I say this all the time, but that's a demon, isn't it? <laughs> Normally, demons don't say hi so sweetly. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're sure, uh, let's bring the other side. Zagath. Is there something else to kill? I could probably do it. Just, you know, point me in the general right direction. <laughs> <laughs> Follow the sound of my voice. I can see you fumbling about in the dark there. Come towards my voice. But right, right. Oh, that's a step. rock. Uh, that's a, a rock. Owl. That was my foot. I was going to say watch your shin. <laughs> see, Kath makes her stumbling way that direction. <laughs> Gorgo, you do. Maybe use her Angara as some sort of sight hound. What? Seeing eye, cat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Angara just completely... Ignores <laughs> Corgo and begins bathing. Okay, yep, normal cat behavior. We'll guide them down uh, these steps towards the edge of this lake, and Andreas will uh, bravely step right up to the edge of the water and uh, greet this creature. Uh, uh, hello. Well, hold on, one more thing before you do that. As you all return to the edge of the lake, you also notice that there is a single blindheim leaning over the water's edge on the shore to the west flashing its eyes at the fish in the water, apparently trying to catch one. It sees you enter and begins hopping around anxiously. Andreas, make a perception check. Well, I'm really not the one to do this, but I suppose... At the moment, I blinded, think you are the one to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is a solid 11. Yep, you, you see this frog-like Blindheim hopping up and down anxiously. Is it back? Is there some... Somebody point me in the right direction. They'll take this beast this time. Calm down, I think. I think we're in the clear, I think. Perhaps it was all a misunderstanding before. Oh, and those creatures, the two that fled from you, they are basically gone. They have okay. disappeared into the water. I've been trying to ask that since the beginning. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Like, Why are we going down here? Okay, gotcha. And the woman-like shape in the water lifts her head a little more out of the water and asks, Who are you? Oh, I am Andreas Witchborn. Uh, these are my companions from the Broken Tusk following Jonesy, Hello. Zankath, Gorgo, and hey, his friend, Rungara. Are you, uh, are you nice? Yes. <laughs> Andreas raises a quizzical eyebrow. <laughs> Why did you hurt the Blindheim? They were just scared. We too were scared. They they jumped out, frightened us. It's dark in here. We aren't aren't used to um being jumped by by uh frog 
adjacent species. All right, the blindheim that is hopping up and down anxiously at the side of the lake flees up the passageway to the northwest. And (laughs) the woman in the water says, then why did you keep chasing them? It looks like you were winning and they ran away and you decided to attack them anyway. I think maybe you're not nice people. You you haven't killed any of them, have you? Um. <laughs> there, there was an, a, a misunderstanding. <laughs> Basically, we thought we thought that we were under attack. We thought that we thought that they were trying to kill us. And unfortunately, mistakes were made. And yes, <laughs> two Blindheims have lost their lives today. Oh. Very regrettably. So you aren't nice people. Well, look. I- I'd better we- not help you. But maybe you could if I apologize correctly. <laughs> Would you like some alcohol, young lady? <laughs> uh, and by the way, she looks like... I think I shared the right one. Yeah, she looks like this. Ooh, cool. Oh, hmm. she's got she's got fishies in her. I think they're. I think it's kelp. It's, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Algae, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Pointy elf-like ears, but her body appears to be made of water, with human like hair, human human hmm. black human hair with like, and a human face, humanish face. Is that like a water ganassi? Is that what they're called? Or like a nymph or something. Uh, you could make a check if you want. Let's see here. Uh, sounds like a demon, a water demon. Probably nature. You could make a nature check. Oh, no. <laughs> Whoops. I got a four. Chauncey got a seven. Andreas, it's probably a demon. It's probably a demon. Jonesy, mm-hmm. it's not a demon, but you don't know what it is. Look, miss, um, we're, we're, we're the good guys. We're nice people. We're, we're, we didn't mean to harm anyone. I tr- we truly thought that they were monsters and beasts trying to devour us. Even when they were running away? Uh, uh, pardon, uh, I, I can't see you, but I have been quite badly injured by one of those creatures and am in a significant amount of pain and can no longer see. I think <laughs> some of them gave as much as they got. And actually, we didn't chase any of them. How many of you are dead? Oh, um, several got (laughs) killed by the burning mammoths. Many of our following were killed. The who? We're the burning mammoths. They are another tribe of, or following of of evil people. They used fire and and burning and, and attacked not just us, but our livestock. We're here searching for ways to defeat them to protect ourselves and our people. I don't think I want to be involved with you. I, I better not help you, but good luck with the Morlock. If you survive, and if you give the Blindheims their magic cap back, maybe you would undo some of the harm that you've done. And she begins sinking back into the water. But, but what's a... Did she say magic cat? <laughs> That's what I heard. Per- perhaps the... Uh, cap. St- the uh, I heard cats. Uh, perhaps the stone. <laughs> the stone. I don't know meat. if I should correct you or, or, or you know, let you know what the correct pronunciation is. What did I actually I, say? Or if she I should let, said, you, let you be confused. She either said cat or cap. You guys find a hat. <laughs> I said no well, cap. Well, there was the cats that we uh, that we destroyed on our way in that attacked Andreas. Perhaps she meant that cat. I'm, I'm pretty I sure have... she meant mocap, which is short for motion capture. Oh, of course, of course. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't hear the mo part. That makes much more sense. <laughs> oh, this has gotten too silly. <laughs> <laughs> but it might be a cap, Mike. <laughs> okay. It's important. <laughs> One lookout for toques. So you're either looking for a cap or a cat. One or the other. One or the other. Why would frogs need a cap? Yeah. Or a cat. Or maybe a cat with a cap. A cat in a hat? Yeah. Oh. And she just sinks back beneath the water. She's gone. Right. And she disappears. Was there really no Mo in front of that? (laughs) 
she, she, she talked about a warlock. Oh, okay. A so, like, warlock. Okay. I think that's probably where you got the mo. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What's a warlock? Okay. Well, I think we need to do some first aid here. Zankath looks like she's in a bad way. So maybe we should spend some time on that if we're not getting ambushed by anything. And um, and maybe do do any of you know what a warlock is? You could do a check to learn something about Morlocks. You could do a society check. Okay. Mm-hmm. Any other options? <laughs> <laughs> Applicable lore. Ooh, I did get a 19 society, and I have a, I have demon lore if Morlocks are demons. You don't know what this is. Is it part of the underworld? <laughs> I'm trained in underworld lore. It is would... literally under the world. Um, I think it's the same thing. But not mm. like criminal yeah. underworld. It, you need a society check or applicable lore. Yeah, I don't know anything. I got a six on society. Oh, Jones, you got a six too. I think most of you would need a natural 20. Yep. Uh, Zenkath and Jonesy, you're convinced that this creature is something has something to do with locks? It probably is some kind of dangerous magical lock. That makes sense. It's like a lock, but more lock than more a regular locks. lock. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah. I, I, I mean, uh, I, I'm a little rusty, but I imagine I could probably handle uh, a more a more extensive lock. Uh, we just have to find it, which I might have a problem with at the moment. Maybe forever, I'm not really sure. Let, let me take a look at you here. And Jonesy will do a medicine check on Zenkath, 24. Awesome. That's a success. Oh, one off of a critical success. That's too bad. That's 12. Wow. And if we spend a full hour, it becomes 24. You want to spend the hour by the lake here? Jessica does, because I know that it's an hour long for the blind thing. I think we should... I think... I think it would it's make worth sense. It. Yeah. I think it's worth it to help you recover your hit points at the very least. I, that gets me almost to full. And then 17 for cargo with 18 hit points back. You're also going to get your wounded condition removed, Jess. Cool. My blind condition goes away after an hour, correct? Yes. After an hour, Zankath's and Corgo's blindness goes away. You gradually find your vision returning and you see this peaceful, quiet. <laughs> underground lake with the water quietly lapping against the shore. I've been in the wall this whole time and you guys didn't say anything. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> oh god, how do I get out of here? Uh, Alright, what do you want to do now? You said there was a like a rock with a clawed mark on it? Yeah, in the middle of the lake to the south, there's a big rock. It's, it's kind of out of your vision on the map. You can just barely make it out at the edge of your vision. There's a rock in the lake. Andreas will make his way along the east bank. Oh, there's another hall. I didn't even know that existed. All right. You want to look at that rock? Yeah, if I can. It's pretty far, but it's kind of in the dim the dim of the light. Make a nature check. Ooh, I got a 21 perception and a 7 nature. Oof. Yeah, you're not sure what's going on with it. It's got a big mark on it. Here, let me take a look on the other side. I'm going to follow Jonesy. All right, so Jonesy begins walking around the west side of the lake. 22, nature? 22. So you have a look at this rock in the middle of this lake, and you conclude that the rock, the marks on the rock must be old, but you think they were made by an enormous cat. It's like giant claw marks. I'm pretty certain a cat did that. You're not sure why it was done, but that's what it looks like to you. Oh, uh, yes, definitely a cat. All right, the party continues moving back and forth along the edge of the water. Yeah. <laughs> scooting around the map. Uh, I don't know. Are we, are we going that Does way? Does it look like that cat, is, the cat that made the claw, is bigger than Harungara? Oh, yes. Okay. It must be large or bigger than that, maybe. Hmm. This edge is making me very nervous. <laughs> yeah, this is a big lake that is scary. I think it trails. Like, I don't think we can go much further than where we're at. Uh, turn around. <laughs> oh. Okay. And just at that moment, a giant. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. No, nothing comes out of the water at you. Uh, uh, the blind times it. come back and blink at you, and you're blind again. All right, if we are recuperated, let's maybe. It seems like this uh, uh, path to the east is the next way to go. 
Are you resuming your previous marching order, which was Zankath in the front scouting, then Corgo searching, then Andreas detecting magic, and then Jonesy searching? I think that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And what is the range on detect magic? I know you can't find a particular location, but what's the distance? Yeah, I detect magic within a 30-foot emanation. Okay. So you begin moving forward, and I need Corgo. Actually, you know what? I wrote the secret check. I forgot. Stop. Oh, awesome. Okay. So <laughs> I don't know if that's a good awesome or bad <laughs> it's awesome. A good or bad. I don't know. <laughs> Zenkath, you're walking up the stairs there, and just as you're about to take another step, Jonesy, you see that Zenkath is about to step right through a tripwire. No. Interesting. Is that all you do? You just say no? Yeah. All right. And then I let her fall and crash. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> he will, I mean, he's as far in the back. Yeah. So he'll just yell out, stop. I stop. Don't take another step. Okay. So Zankath stops. There's a tripwire going across the floor, uh, across one of the stairs in front of you. Uh, is it possible that it can be stepped over? Certainly. Or... Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to mess with it then. In fact, as you look around, you notice, and Jonesy notices, there is blood all over the floor in the area further up the stairs, just a few steps up. What if we have to make a hasty retreat? I feel like we should try to disable this thing if it's... Like, what kind of trap is this? I didn't want to accidentally set it off, but you are probably correct. Game Master, I have never done trap disarming in uh, Pathfinder. What do I do? I think you need to use your thievery, thievery. right? Thievery. Okay. And don't critically fail. I mean, I make no <laughs> guarantees. You know how I roll. Here goes nothing. Wait one second. Aw. <laughs> Wait, no. I didn't critically <laughs> fail. No, you didn't critically fail. But it's only fail. a 14. All right, you realize that if you were to try to disable this trap, with your current understanding of it, you think you might set it off. So it's better left alone. I, uh, I, I agree that we should disarm it, but I'm fairly certain I'm going to set it off if I do that. So let's just all make a mental note if we have to flee uh, to step over this particular step. One moment, though. One moment. Think about this here. Is this, um, d do you know what would happen if this trap was triggered? Did, did your role give you any information? So yeah, so Jonesy, you look around some more. I'll apply that perception check. And you realize that up in the darkness of the ceiling, there is an array of rocks that have been tied up. And if someone were to trip this wire, the pile of rocks would fall upon whoever was walking up the steps, causing quite a lot of damage, possibly trapping them. Does, does it seem to be enough rock to block the entrance? Or You could probably get through or move a few rocks to get through, but it would be inconvenient. Okay. So then I will not trigger the trap from range just because we might it might make it difficult for us to get through. So you're walking up this passage to the east. It has a few steps up. This room beyond, if you want to go ahead and proceed into the next room, which you can do, this room beyond stretches 30 feet to the east, 15 feet north and south. Uh, who's got the light? I do, and uh, Andreas does. Great. Now that you're in this room, you can see the stairs lead up through a passage to the north, and another set of steps leads up a passage to the east. There are bloodstains that mar the surface of the floor, but the chamber is otherwise nondescript. There's nothing particularly interesting in here. Josh, you can also move both your characters if you drag a box around them. What? But they're independent thinkers, Sean. Sean, cool. why are you ruining our fun of watching Josh move his characters one square at a time each? Okay, you guys, and you guys don't know this, but inside my own head, I role-played Corgo picking up Prongara and oh. carrying him. Oh. Over the wire. Yep. And I moved my little tokens like that, but I, that was just for me. I, I, I respect the decision. Me too. A little bit of method acting there. Yeah. What do you want to do now? There's an opening to the north, there's an opening to the east. Stairs going up in both directions. Check for traps. I have rolled some secret checks. I'll assume that one is checking to the north. I'll do another set of checks for the east. And okay, I got it. The blood, like there's, you said there's dried blood. Is there, mm -hmm. like, can you tell which direction it's, like, did it, pro, like, is there blood splatter proceeding a direction? There we go. The description I've been provided with does not specify that. However, 
Okay. <laughs> I will say that it looks like it's generally spattered around, and maybe some of it looks like it has flowed down, especially from the passage to the north. Okay. So we can therefore conclude that whoever is to the north is already wounded and will thus be easier prey. So uh, everyone's down with north. Are we going that direction? I'm neutral either here. That's my vote. North it is. Yeah, I mean, I'll, yeah, cool. Yeah, do it. But did we, wait, did we do these checks? We did the checks. <laughs> yeah. and okay, apparently. So far, you have spotted nothing. Okay. I'm, I'm about to die. Okay, here Everything we go. Everything looks fine. Zankath. <laughs> oh, no. As you're walking up the steps, you do indeed trigger another trap yep. that nobody managed to spot. Awesome, now, bring it. I feel a little bad about this because it does seem like since you know what you're looking for, you should have a pretty good ability to, to spot these. However, the secret GM rolls were pretty bad, okay. <laughs> including a critical failure. So we can just blame Mike. Yep. Yes, I'm afraid so. I need a reflex save from you. Okay. Well, if anybody was going to have to make a reflex save, it would be Zankov. 26. Finally, no. a wow. decent roll. Okay, Bravo. so that is not a crit success, but that is a success. Zankath is walking up the steps, and suddenly she trips this wire. You hear a little uh, sound of, of this wire snapping, and then a loud rumble, and a storm of rocks falls from somewhere above. I do a forward roll. Like, I feel the wire against my foot, and I do this really awesome forward roll oh, cool. to avoid some of the damage. All right, so you have a success, which means you take half damage from what I'm about to roll. Okay. You take seven points of damage. It's not terrible. As the boulders pummel you, and you are not trapped or anything because you succeeded. Don't worry, guys. I got it. It was another trap. That was a very cool somersault. Thank you. Yes, you've got quite the acrobatic skill. Oh, that one of those got me in the back. That's going to sting. So you continue walking up this passageway. The rancid stench of rotten fish fills every pocket of air in this long chamber. Gross. A thick stone pillar divides the chamber in two, leaving just enough space on either side to pass and to see around. We pinch your move around it. All right. To the north, the cave opens up a bit more and contains an unusual pile of objects about two feet high. Does it seem like a nest similar to the ones I'm we've seen? I'm about to thus describe it. Okay, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Three stacked rocks make the general shape of a frog's head that has two round rocks for eyes. Chalk drawings on the rocks give the frog's mouth jagged teeth and make its eyes seem large and staring. A glowing skull cap made of soft leather rests atop the frog's head. Now we must wonder if Mike added the cap <laughs> <laughs> due to our poor hearing. It's all a bit of clever ruse. I'll never tell. Is there magic in this room? Yes. As you begin moving forward, you begin to sense magic coming from this area somewhere. Perhaps the glowing cap. That doesn't seem I... right. However, <laughs> I got to do a couple more checks here. Hang on. Yeah. Uh -huh. Why do I keep going first? Okay. Corgo. Yep. Good. Great. And <laughs> Jonesy. Oh, okay. Great. All right. So as Zankath and Andreas are stepping forward, Corgo and Jonesy both spot more tripwires. Right about. In fact, I'm going to move you back just a little bit here. Right about. Uh, where you are right now, moving through the passage. Bastion, no. <laughs> you are moving through the passage and you spot another pair of tripwires, one on either side. Both of you spot them. Well, watch out, Zanks. There's another one. How did you not see that? I mean, it's right in front of my eyes. You think I would be able to <laughs> notice at this, this point, but good looking out there, Corgo. I think after one basically almost killed you, you would just be aware of them now. I mean, basically killed me is a bit of an overstatement, but sure. <laughs> I think you just want to show off again. It looks identical to the last tripwire that you tripped. Oh, be nice. She was blind <laughs> half an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. been a hard day. Then I have to take you to an optometrist. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to try to disable these ones, Zankath, or are we going to step over them again? Sure, let's give it a go. A 17, so it's better. Again, I don't think that's enough. I'm looking yeah. at the information here, and 
I think based on the effect... It's a plus eight, by the way. Box fall, you die? Oh, Se- no. Note 17 is not enough. You uh-huh. are not able to safely cut the cord. Man, you know, if I could just roll above a 10, maybe I could get there, but here we are. Nope, I think, I think I'm going to set this one off again. I can try on the other side, but I'm... Maybe I could try on the other side? You could try on the other side, sure. You want to go around to the other side and try? You want to go around to the other side and... Whoop, sorry. Ah, I'm in the wall! There you are. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, give it another try. Let's do it again. Hey, you did it! 21. You did it. Nice work. One out of four. <laughs> you are able to cut this one. Maybe it wasn't made as well, but for whatever reason, you're able to disable this trap. There we go. Oh, just, you know, took a couple tries. I've got it now. All right. Is there anything else in between us and this uh, glowy cap that I want to check out? Uh, you don't really see anything. Doesn't mean much, but I'll I'll head up to it. And I'll, without touching the glowy cap, I will why are you assess rolling? its magical capabilities. Why, why, why are you rolling? Huh? Stop, <laughs> stop rolling. What? I don't, tr- what do I, don't, I don't like this privately rolling thing. What? I don't, I don't know what you mean. I, <sighs> Am I making you uncomfortable? A little bit. More times. <laughs> He's not stopping. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing it on purpose. He just keeps rolling. <laughs> All right. So at that moment, from out of a cubby in the wall that you didn't notice comes a bizarre creature. Roll for initiative. Everyone gets a plus one because Zankath is scouting. And Corgo, you actually spot the creature before it jumps out, so you're not going to be flat-footed against it here. Aha! Well, those perceptions should be our initiatives, then. We can make them your initiatives if you want. Okay. Sure. Zankath, your initiative, is, I guess, is 13, if I had the plus one. That's a terrible roll. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> not your fault, though, Jess. <laughs> I mean, even when Mike rolls for me, he it's still terrible. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> So this weird creature that jumps at you looks like... Does it look like Morlock? <laughs> this. What? Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, cool. That is a gray-skinned man with green eyes. He's wearing a blind time as a hat and maybe using their entrails. Uh-huh, I think like, that's literally intestines. their guts uh-huh. as like a whip. In his other hand, you can't really tell from the picture, but in his other hand is a hammer. Yep. Yep. He probably used the hammer to extract the guts. Also, <laughs> he's got very long toenails. Oh yeah. That's mm-hmm. an important. Nice. That's probably his, his agile secondary attack. Oh, don't like that. He's got real like it puts the lotion on its skin vibes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. And also a bit of a beer belly. Uh, yes. yes. From all the from all the lotion. Fish guts. Blindheims, yeah. And the weird creature gets a nineteen. Cool, 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 cool. That is let's see, at the top of the order here. We have Corgo. Corgo, this weird creature is about to leap at you and attack. What do you want to do? So now Corgo feels all guilty because he was just made to feel bad for killing stuff. (laughs) Um, But this doesn't look good like this. He's got like a bloody hammer and he's covered in intestines and he looks crazy. This person, this is a person, I assume. You haven't done a check. Maybe you could do some kind of check to... Well, no, I'm sorry. You did do a check earlier about Morlocks, so maybe this is a Morlock, or maybe it's something else. I thought we thought Morlocks were a type of lock. Well, you and Zankath do, yes. Oh, we've rolled badly. Mm, If I go in front... So, Corko's kind of behind everybody, and this guy's kind of like in a little crevice in the wall. He's like a wall... He's a wall walker or something. And... If I, I go in front of him, if I go between you guys, can you still attack him? I'm not, like, blocking yeah, him. Yeah, I, yeah, I've got a reach weapon, so. Okay. So Corgo feels all weird. He's just going to run up there and raise his shield. He is wearing one of the things that she was upset about us killing. Yeah, she she did seem to be partial to the blind hymns, and... On the other hand, if he kills Blindheims, maybe that makes him your friend. He's good. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> no. She was a demon. Sure. 
Are we the baddies? Let's not jump to conclusions. It's probably a demon. <laughs> she was a demon trying to trick us. Oh, she's a demon who's in league with this demon. That makes sense. So Corgo and Frongar run to the front and get in the way, and Corgo raises his shield up, and that's all three of his actions. All right, that's Corgo's turn. The creature gets to go. The creature grins at Corgo. Well, see, he's friendly. Revealing gross, disgusting, decayed teeth. Oh, he's not friendly. And... Oh, let's start with a strike with the fist. A 22. Oh, that hits. All right. As a free action, when it strikes you with its fist, it grabs you. You are now grabbed. That's gross. Let's get me out of grabbed. Is there a grabbed condition we can... Yeah, grabbed. There we go. You are now grabbed, which means you are flat-footed to it and you are also immobilized. Does he have to make up or... Check against my fortitude, or is it nope, automatic? it's a free automatic grab if he hits you with the fist. Oh, I'm all wrapped up in these intestines. It's gross. <laughs> <laughs> and he does 13 points of bludgeoning damage with the fist. Ouchie. And he's going to attack you with his warhammer. And because you are grappled, right? Or grabbed, excuse me. That'd be hard to do. You are flat-footed to him. And that means, yep, great. Okay, here comes the attack with the Warhammer. That's an 18 to hit. Is that a hit? It oh. misses. It misses, even though you're flat-footed and everything, huh? Yeah, he's got. A, he's hitting. He's hitting Corgo, even though he's all wrapped up. But Cor, he's hitting his shield. Oh right, you have your shield up. Yeah. Excellent. He's not a friend, you guys. Confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're sure it doesn't cost an action to do the grab, even though you don't have to roll. It doesn't cost you an action. No, it's, it's a free action. So strangling grasp is a free action if he hits you with his fist strike. Rude. Okay. The creature is grabbed. It says trigger. The creature hits a medium or smaller creature with his fist strike. It's a strangling grasp it is a free action. The creature is grabbed, and huh? the creature well, the creature that he grabs is grabbed. And this creature you're fighting begins to strangle the creature. So he's wrapping his hand around your neck, Corgo, and slowly suffocating you. You can't speak, so you can't tell them that he's not friendly. They'll have to figure it out somehow. (laughs) (laughs) Nice hug. And also, Corgo, uh, you you can't cast any spells with a verbal component. (laughs) And you can't issue any commands as well. What a nerf. Mm. That's unfortunate. Well, it says you can't activate items with a command component. I, I, I don't I guess maybe Hrungara, does Hrungara count as activating an item? I, I don't know. I think you could probably gesture at the monster and tell Hrungara to attack it that way. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I don't have a great chance of hitting again, but I don't have any other useful skills at the moment uh, now that you've been grabbed, so I'm just going to take an attack that I'm unlikely to hit with and just see what happens. Nope. It misses. Oh. Jonesy, this creature has grabbed Corgo around the neck and is trying to strangle him while also beating at him with a warhammer. Corgo, don't hurt him. He might be a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at my first level spell slots and it's at zero. That doesn't sound right. You did cast some healing spells. Which, yeah, I did. Those are separate slots, though. They are. You definitely did not cast. I don't remember casting no. any of these. No, you didn't. But I don't want to lie. You didn't. That, that would go against Jonesy's whatever cleric's got. Mm. Um, so you, I don't know. You you only cast cantrips and heals. Do you think? Maybe your fire ray, but you would we have had time to re- refresh that now. So okay, because you, you didn't cast bless sanctuary or fear. Well, any any listeners don't hate me if I'm lying. Jonesy's gonna move up. There is a fire ray from Jonesy. Yes, and that's also separate. This is a focus spell. Okay, cool. I don't know how spells work in this game. So I'm going to cast a bless. Ah. And then if we're within five feet of you, we also get that buff. Okay. How do I get the light effect going? Don't have to. We'll just remember if we're within the right distance of you. But it's cool, Sean. It is cool. That's a thing. Zankath. How tall is Frongara? Can I fire over Frongara? Yeah. Frongara is about two and a half, three feet tall, depending on how... Did we small. Small? I can't remember. He or she. I can never remember. He's small. It's a he. He. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I can never help. remember yeah. Mike either. You, you should be able to shoot over, although with Trangara and Corgo in your way, I might give this creature a small amount of cover. I was going to move over one. Uh, I was going to step so that I'd be in a diagonal and avoiding Corgo entirely. 
There's also a bit of wall there from that angle, though. Uh, it's not much. I'm not going to give the creature much cover, but yeah, it's not going to make much difference whether you move over or not. Just roll natural 20. Yeah, yeah it's no big deal. Yeah, don't don't use an action moving if because uh, I don't think it's going to make much difference. Don't I'm let Mike roll for you. No, no, God, no. Mike doesn't I'll let get Mike roll. Roll. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. No, Mike. No, I'm going to roll bad for myself. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> What about from the other side of Jonesy? Am I going to get penalties over there? Uh, I'd say you have a slightly clearer shot over there. Okay. I'm going to move. I can move through my allies, right? It's no extra. Yeah. Cool. Uh, that way I get the bless. Oh, yeah. Smart. Uh, so I'm going to move over there. Uh, I'm going to say I didn't have my bow out because I've been doing stuff that probably required both hands. So I'm going to unsheath my bow and I'm going to shoot. Uh, that Ooh. is a... Ooh. 25 to hit. That is a That's hit. That's what I like to see. That is definitely a hit. That is five damage. Ouch. So Zankath moves to a place where she has a clear shot and sends an arrow directly home. Direct hit. I'm trying to knock him off of Corgo, which I know is a thing that I can't do, but like I shoot to like the shoulder that's not holding him to kind of spin him, spin mm. him away from Corgo. It doesn't do anything mechanically, but that's what she's doing. Okay. Andreas, what do you want to do? I'm torn between trying to get more information and just bashing this thing's head in. Hmm. Do I want to spend the action on a recall knowledge that I will fail? <laughs> well, when you put it like that, Sean, I don't think you should do it. <laughs> when you put so it like I'm, that, I don't see how you can't. I'm going to spell strike, and I'm going to use... Oh, let's do a produce flame, because if I crit, he gets to burn... Uh, I have Bless on. Oh, yeah, that's a 23 to hit. That is a hit. Yeah. So you take 10 points of bludge and 6 points of fire. Ouch. Maximum on the fire. Nice. Nice. And then I will do an Arcane Cascade, which uh, will give me some temp HP and add some fire going forward to my, to my weapon. All right, so even with Corgo in the way between Andreas... And this monster, as it tries to strangle Corgo, he whips around him with the meteor hammer and smashes it into this creature. And there's a burst of flame. And the creature cries out and says something you can't understand in a language that I don't know if you've even heard before. And it doesn't sound happy about it. Is it goblin? I speak goblin. It's not goblin. Is it halfling? <laughs> It is not happening. Weird. That's a good guess, though. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta ask. Just keep guessing if it's halfling, and someday you'll be right. Someday I'll be right. Corgo, it's your turn. Corgo's getting pummeled by a hammer while getting choked. His face is turning purple. It's gonna raise a shield to continue blocking that stuff. And I don't know if he would try to escape or just, just try to hit it. He would just try to hit it. He tries at it. Stab it with a spear. Ah! Ah! 22. Wow, everyone is hitting my monster. Finally. Fine. Whatever. Great. <laughs> so it is a monster. <laughs> ah! Sick damage. Wow, you stab at the creature as it continues tightening its hand around your neck. What else do you want to do? What's the official decision on whether Frongar can whether he can issue it and actually... He can't talk, I guess, right? Hold on, let's look yeah, at... Yeah, so the strangling grasp description says you can't activate items with a command component. I, I don't know if that includes commanding an animal companion. So an, an, an animal companion... I'm looking up the command animal companion rules because it's because the command two. trait right. is different from issuing a command necessarily. I'm going to ask an AI. Hey, can I command <laughs> an animal in Pathfinder 2E while getting choked? <laughs> 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 I like your guys' new setup, because uh, now I can watch as uh, Sean is looking up stuff through Jeanette's camera. <laughs> I can't really <laughs> see what it is or read any of it, but I can watch as you Google frantically. <laughs> you can see when the map is up. So I shouldn't be yes. looking up anything untoward. Not unless you're going to put it onto the full screen so I can see it better. <laughs> <laughs> Just for you. <laughs> Okay, I can't do it because it is an, has the auditory trait, and auditory trait requires that the creature can speak. Yeah, you can't speak. So, Corgo will attack again. All right, the, but your cat is 
sort of pawing at the ground, looking nervous, like, what's going on? Ah, Corgo misses with a 12. All right, that does, that's not successful. Look at his eyes are bulging. All right, and now the creature gets to go, and it again says something guttural at you in a language you can't understand. And let's see here. Three action squeezes you for its special ultra kill ability. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't get that. No reason to use shove or anything because it's got Corgo strangled. Yeah, it's just really nothing really exciting here I can do except stand and hammer at you. So here we go. If I'm going to be really honest, shove would be good. That's Why would shove be helpful? Because it would mean I'd lose my strangle. No, because you still you can still maintain the grapple, and you, now you've got him prone, which means he gets penalty oh, like to his attacks. Oh, you shove to knock him prone. Okay, yeah. right. I forgot. Yes, you're absolutely right. I forgot that shove can do that. Let's try it. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Yep. <laughs> Look, it makes it more fun. I get it. Fifteen is not going to succeed anyway. Oh. Against Corgo's what is it? Fortitude. Yeah. Yeah. Fortitude or reflex would save. Yeah. So he tries to slam you down on the ground, but you're able to, with your massive strength, to resist, and he's not able to knock you down. So he will then settle for just trying to hit you, but that does have the attack trait, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we've got multiple attack penalty coming in for this attack with the Warhammer. You're welcome, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> that hits. Uh, yes, that does hit. Ooh. I'm not able to use the surprise attack feature, but I am able to use the sneak attack feature because you are flat-footed to him because he has you strangled. So you take nine points of bludgeoning damage from the hammer and from sneak attack because you are flat-footed to him because of the grab condition, you will take four points of precision damage. How's Corgo looking? Rut row. Corgo is bloody and his face is turning purple and he's glaring at Andreas. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that uh, was going to be plus 15 to his attack, and I took it down a little bit. So I tried. <laughs> All right, and I, there's no way I'm going to hit with this last attack, but I got nothing else to do. Well, yeah, the athletics check would also have the multiple attack penalty if I were to try and knock you prone again. So, yeah, there's nothing really I can do. I'll just use my third action to attack, and it doesn't really matter. I miss with a 10. It is Jonesy's turn. Jonesy, you can see that Corgo is beginning maybe to lose consciousness, and it's not looking good. Jonesy is going to do some motions with his hands frantically and try to cast Daze, which will be a will save. Fancy. Nice. A oh. 20. Yep, oh. he makes it. Yeah. So I half think damage. he takes half, which is going to be two. Two <laughs> points of damage. All right, the creature blinks at your attempt to daze it, but it is not stunned or anything and takes a little bit of damage. And then my last action, I will continue to sustain the bliss. Zancath, you have another clear shot. I'm going to activate uh, my point blank shot stance. Now he's in trouble. Now he's in trouble. That extra two damage is going to do it. And I'm going to shoot it. Do it. It's oh, so a 27 wow. to hit. That nice. is definitely a hit. Is it a critical? No, it is not a critical. Sugar. Oh. I hoped. That is six damage. The creature takes another arrow. It's clearly not happy about this, but it's still got plenty of fight left in it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna shoot again. It's probably not gonna hit, but I'm gonna give it a go. Yeah, because your assisting shot will help us too. Uh, twenty. Twenty is a miss. What is a miss? Does that include the bless? Oh, that does. doesn't. That, does it, that does doesn't include the bless. Doesn't even include the uh, minus five penalty. I don't oh. know why it never does that. So it's actually oh. a fifteen. Okay. Yep, that misses. And Andreas, Corgo's glaring at you. Uh, he's gonna. <laughs> I'll see. I'll see what I can do here. I am going to do a trip. All right. On this creature. So let's Fortitude. see here. Uh, I'm gonna add the bless to this. That's a 21 against Fortitude DC. No, Reflex DC. Reflex DC? If it meets, it beats. You got it. Oh, Target nice. falls and lands prone. Yeah. Now, what happens if he's holding Corgo? Uh, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> Corgo dies? Oh, no. No, no. no the, the pronoun was addressing... 
the mysterious creature. <laughs> Take it back. Oh, oh Andreas, fly. <laughs> try it, try it. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, well, with that uh, super successful situation, I am going to cast... Oh, wait, what actually happens? Does he oh, let yeah. go? Does it let go, Mike? Uh, I don't... There's that, is there anything rules-wise that says he has to let go? I have this fun image of the monster laying on its back, but its hand <laughs> it's, is, it's still is still reached around. up <laughs> yeah, and grasping I like onto it. Corgo. I like it. Let's do that. Uh, <laughs> you attempt to grab fun. It makes it worse because it's like... <laughs> <laughs> You've got this dead weight it's around your down, yeah. neck. Page 470. Oh, we, we, we're trying to find the rule? Is there an actual rule about what happens if you're being like grappled and you fall a prone? rule for everything. Or if you're being grabbed and you fall prone? The, the grabber falls prone? I am frantically Googling. I'll ask the AI. <laughs> oh, by the way, that uh, this is this is I won't say which one it is, but it told me to focus on my breathing. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's good advice. I mean, it is good advice, but I'm not but sure I can't it's... breathe. What exactly did you write? Can I command an animal in Pathfinder 2nd Edition while getting choked? <laughs> I told you to breathe. I was wondering if you remember to put the Pathfinder part in there, or you just typed, Can I command an animal while I'm being choked? I did remember <laughs> to put Pathfinder in there, yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't see anything specific. I think it's going to be up to you, Mike. It did recommend to increase the DC of the nature check. I'm looking up this forced movement to break, grab, or grapple. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, I'm going to say that the creature is prone, but Mm -hmm. one thing I saw online said that prone doesn't necessarily mean you're completely flat on the ground. He's sort of in a more vulnerable position, sort of kneeling down, but still grabbing Corgo by the neck. So, But you get the advantages you would get against a prone target, so use them. Corgo, you're so much taller than him, just stand up and he won't be able to reach your neck. (laughs) I will make a second attack, because I'm going to have backswing on that. That is a... Seven. Seven is not a hit. I will hero point that. Ooh. Yeah. Yes! Somebody on Reddit four years ago did say (laughs) that being prone doesn't mean you're 100% flat on the ground, and so you should still be able to grab onto somebody. I'm sorry, Mike. My my foundry's (laughs) glitched. Every time I use my hero points, I get the exact same roll as the thing before. I think there's a problem. Yeah, I think you're probably right. We've (laughs) seen that before. Yeah, that seems broken. I'll just roll that again, because obviously the hero point was broken. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Actually, let, do it again, and let's just see what happens. I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Try it and see what happens. I've seen wow. that happen on roll 20. Well, Did it no. do it again? No. no I made, made it an 11 that time. Oh, okay. All right. So I still miss. Uh, okay. With my last action, uh, I recharge my spell strike. And that's back to Corgo. Corgo, this creature is on the ground. You can tell it's about to get up. What do you want to do? Corgo nearly about to pass out, <laughs> so glaring at everyone in his party because they're all giving advice on how to kill him. He's been trying to hold back for so long, but he drops a spear and he just gets he gets mad. Does he drop the shield too? I don't think he can. Oh, I guess I agree. <laughs> and he tries to do what he does. Bites a thing for 22. <laughs> 22 is a hit. Ah, 15 damage. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. It's a okay. good roll right there. Corgo, wow. Corgo embraces the grapple and just goes straight in with his face into the guy's like chest area. Wow. Uh, that is a serious injury you've just inflicted onto this creature. It struggles to get back up. And then Corgo starts swiping at it like a crazy person. 18 to hit, that misses. That does miss, even with its prone condition, it still misses. Oh, yeah, bummer. Yeah, his AC is reduced, but not enough to make an 18 hit. Okay. And <laughs> the creature, again, curses something at you, spitting blood, and swings at you with the war hammer. That hits. That is a hit. And that means you will take 12 points of regular damage bludgeoning damage, and it probably doesn't matter, but there's also some precision damage, one point of precision damage, for a total of 13 points of damage. Corgo's sleeping. All right. <laughs> sleepy, sleepy time. So Corgo's, Corgo's already directly in front of the creature in initiative, so we don't have to change any of that. Great. All right, so the creature uses an action to step 
Oh, he's got to stand up first, fool. Oh, I'm sorry. To stand up. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> to stand up. <laughs> and then takes an action to step while glaring at Zancath. Sure. That seems fair. And that is the creature's turn. Jonesy, the creature is right in front of you. It has stepped right in front of the three of you. Uh-oh. Is this the first time you've been in melee with the monster? <laughs> no. <laughs> Jones is super brave, and for his next really brave action, he's going to stabilize Corgo. Wow. Yeah, well, sure. Meaning I can't move because I have to sustain Bless, so he gulps really hard <laughs> and then looks towards Sankath because she's next. Okay. Uh-huh. That's it. That's it? All right. Yep. Zancath, this creature is right in front of you. What do you want to do? Your bless is still only five feet, right? Around uh, no, you? No, it continues to grow. So, so it's 10, it... 10, 15 feet now? Yep. Uh, and a step does not incur an attack of opportunity. Correct. I'm going to take a step to get a little distance. That's smart. And uh, then I'm going to shoot it with my bow. Mm-hmm. Come on, critical. Nope, that's a 19. That's not a critical. That's not even a hit. Yep, Okay. So that happened. Let's... Oh, you know what? I'm going to hero point that. Yep, it's a miss, but you can hero point it. Yep, going to hero point that. Actually going to remember to use my thing this once. Oh, yeah. Oh. Again. It's a 29. Not, not a critical, but that is a hit. Oh, man. That's five damage. Oof. Okay, this creature is about <laughs> to fall over. It is teetering on the edge of consciousness okay. as it looks desperately to try to kill one of you. Just If it could just kill one of you, it would, be, it would die happy. <laughs> Let's see if I can't manage to magically hit one more time. That's a 26 what? to hit, minus 21. 5. Yeah. 21? 21. Is a hit. Yeah. yeah. Six damage. Eight damage because of my two. That's max. Describe your kill. I'm going to go right through the ribs. Like just, I'm kind of low and it's, I assume, taller than me because, you know, everybody is. And I'm just going to kind of shoot up and just go right through the ribs. The creature wheezes, spraying blood all over and falls atop this mound that it has built here that looks like a frog with a cap on. It falls on top of it. It sort of claws at the cap and then collapses to the ground. Oh, he liked his uh, cap. Zankath, that was an amazing <laughs> shot. Oh, thank you, Squirrel. All right. Uh, Zankath's going to run over and check on Corgo. Oh, he's fine. <laughs> 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 we probably should give him first aid, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's yep. probably a good idea. I think. You, just you don't have to. You can just leave him here. Corgo is unconscious and throwing up blood everywhere. <laughs> he's he's stable. He looks so peaceful. He's stabilized. <laughs> Jonesy patiently waits for Zancath to get out of the way, and then he will do some first aid. 20. Successfully. Nice. 11. 11 hit points back to Corgo, who wakes up and is wounded one. I think if you use treat wounds, it goes away. Oh, yeah. I guess you're right. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Yes. Yeah. If it was magic, I guess it'd be different. Okay. So, Corgo, you wake up. You're not wounded. You have 11 hit points. You're all in this room pretty sure this hat is the thing that lady was talking about. You guys all you all thought she said cat, but I was pretty certain that it was a cap. I could have sworn she said cat, but no, I think you're right. This does, this is a cap and I, I assume <laughs> this is a I, I mean, I thought that the creature the thing she was talking about was actual locks, but I thought maybe it was right. this. I thought you were right. I've been around a lot of explosions in my day, providing demons. Sure. <laughs> uh, can I, I identify the cap and loot this monster. Sure. Make an arcana, religion, occultism, or nature check. Uh, Ooh, well, me. the arcana part of my mind doesn't remember anything, but the <laughs> occultism part of my mind is totally on top of it. Oh, well, your ar- arcana part <laughs> rolled a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> but my occultism part rolled a 24. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I actually don't know if I'm allowed to do that. I, I think you probably get to choose one of the skills, and yeah, then probably. you probably have to stick with the result. So I think Andreas probably thinks this, maybe this is not the magical thing that he's sensing with a natural one. Maybe you think it's something else. It's a weird cap. It's a leather cap in the shape of a small bowl, 
and inside is a melted nub of wax with a small black wick. Ugh. I will I will cast Read Aura. With a natural one, you might think it's a cat. Yeah, <laughs> we're back to it. <laughs> Jonesy rolled a 13, so I didn't do any better, really. Jonesy, you think it's probably magical, but you're not really sure what it does. I have Read Aura, which is another spell that I can cast on the hat to know if it is actually magical or not. It is. Okay. It is magical. It's totally and magical. The school of magic is evocation. Okay, it is magic, and it's evocation, you said? Correct. Ugh, it's evoking light. Well, normally I would encourage trying on hats, but uh, based on that creature's appearance and his obsession with the hat, I suggest we don't put it on. Oh, I've got a picture. Oh, the cap? Oh. It's cute. Let me show you the picture. Jonesy needs to wear a hat, for it's sure. It's a cute hat. It's a cute hat. I think you'll agree. Jonesy's going to want to wear it now. Is he showing us the cute hat in an attempt to tempt one of us to wear it? That's, Most I certainly. Think that's what's happening. Oh, it is a cute oh, hat. That is cute. <laughs> it's got a little candle on top of it. A, it's a leather peasant cap with a bowl, a bowl. riveted to the top. <laughs> and the bowl has a candle in it. It's kind of like the WoW kobolds that wear the candles on their heads. Yeah, it's oh, like yeah. that. Totally. Uh, now I want it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of want it too now. Maybe we should put it on uh, Bastion's head first. No, oh, it's much too big for him. I think I should wear it. <laughs> but maybe if she's, if that water lady, you know, sounded like she wanted that. Well, she wanted it to go to the blind times, which I think we need her assistance. So I think we need to give it to them. Yeah, I do feel kind of bad about murdering those people. <laughs> there is that as well. Sure. Well, I'm I'm pleased that you feel kind of bad about murder. <laughs> I haven't stopped thinking about it since we started playing. <laughs> so it's impacting me. <laughs> they were animals. <laughs> Since we saw the baby ones, we were all like, oh no. Oh yeah, that oh, kind of no. that got to us. Yeah. That yeah, was rough. did like a me and Sean and a couple friends were playing through a like a pirate campaign and I just couldn't be a pirate because it's so mean. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You have cleared out this room. You have made your way past several traps. And now you're thinking about trying to give the cap maybe to the Blindheims. And I guess we'll find out what happens in two weeks. Oh. No. No, I, no let's get playing. No. <laughs> Just no, keep playing. No. Keep playing. Thanks for listening to Broken Tusk Rising. You can help the podcast by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, by following us on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram as at the House of Bob or by chatting with us on Discord, and most of all, by supporting us on Patreon. That's at patreon.com slash thehouseofbob. This show is possible due to all our patrons who get special zines, one-shots, episode commentary, and other stuff for supporting the podcast. Art for this series is by Sean Makes. Episode art that you see on social media for this episode is by Jeanette. Audio production and music are by me, Mike Hammock. Thanks again for listening, and roll on. Ah, Andreas. I mean, that's me. Corgo, <laughs> you're so much taller than him. Just stand up and he won't be able to reach your neck. Oh, Ooh. wow. <laughs> your, your, your voice volume changed there and it was yeah, like... Yeah, it did. It was uh, awesome. Air, it was like an airplane announcement. Yeah. That's cool. The magic is... It was like the narrator cut in or maybe like... <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ron the pilot of a plane or something. Everybody ready to stop recording? Are you doing an outro? Or no? Oh, yeah. Uh, I am. Yes, of course I am. Why wouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, I know what I'm doing. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't John supposed to read the outro this time? Did he oh. read it? Well, you've all had a turn, and so oh, okay. I thought I would take a turn again. Never mind. That's fair. Trying to throw me under the bus. Sorry, I don't remember. <laughs> I can't you are remember Blue Falconing anything. this whole episode. <laughs> Blue Falcons all over the place. <laughs> oh, Mike, why don't you just attack the unconscious Corgo? <laughs> well, look, look, Cargo, you're already at zero hit points. You can't take more hit points. That's, no, I'm just gonna... that's, a, that's actually that's a really that's good not point. actually true. You would just go to dying three or something like that.